Well, you know, the first one would be is if you ever were a smoker, um, that alone, um, it's good that you quit. And data shows that as time passes, the damage you've potentially done to your lungs and the rest of your body is starts to essentially uh, shrink, if you will. And so uh, there's, it's truly never too late to quit. Um, but <clears throat> I think commonly people say to us, oh, I'm not all that short of breath, as if there was an acceptable level of shortness of breath. And so the first thing would be is to reflect honestly about your limitations with exercise and activity. And are those limits because you've become truly less active and you just have started to slug it out? Or is it because you actually find limitations because you have trouble breathing? Um, if your occupation exposes you to a lot of air pollutants, and if you've been a smoker or around a lot of secondhand smoke, and you're having any amount of trouble breathing, or a cough, or chest tightness, or you hear wheezing, or things like that, you should get them evaluated. Um, the testing that we do uh, to at least initially begin an evaluation for those kind of symptoms are minimal and non-invasive breathing tests that uh, take very little effort, maybe a chest x-ray, an exam, and a discussion. So really, you know, low tech, not painful, no invasiveness, um, and can, answer, can actually do a couple of great things. If there is a problem, find it early, uh, and potentially start to begin you on therapy for whatever is, you know, potentially wrong with your lungs. Or better yet, provide reassurance and say, you know, actually you are fine, you're just out of shape, and you actually have good lungs, now go use them and get some exercise. Well, the, the main areas right now that, uh, that there's therapeutic potential is, is asthma and, and COPD. Um, the, these are two areas of, of lung disease that have had a, a lot of nice advances in recent years from at least a medicinal therapy. Um, they, they've always benefited from um, pulmonary rehabilitation if you needed oxygen, you should be on oxygen. There haven't been advances in oxygen. Uh, without a doubt, you should be vaccinated. Um, but the real advances are coming in the inhaled forms of the medications. You know, the, the benefit here is, is that the problem in your lung that is especially safe for asthma or COPD, um, we can give the medication quite literally directly to the source. So you're not getting a lot of the systemic effects, in particular systemic side effects, that can come from all the other medicines that you may be taking, you know, that you swallow. Um, and though you're trying to fix maybe one other particular organ, the drug is obviously circulating through your entire body. Uh, pulmonary medications have a very local effect. Generally speaking, are locally metabolized, and so you don't have a systemic effect. It's very nice. Um, in advanced forms um, of COPD and emphysema, um, surgery actually starts to become an option. Um, even as people are still suffering from significant symptoms and bad lung function, despite being on all the maximal inhalers, having done rehab, etc., there is a, uh, an approved procedure called lung volume reduction surgery, and it actually improves things for patients. That's a pretty dramatic intervention, but at that stage of disease, um, there is very little left to offer, and this becomes actually a, a really nice, attractive option uh, that has great data behind it in regards to patient outcomes. There's also lung transplant. We're a fantastic lung transplant center. You know, Dr. Garrity and Dr. Brady run a fantastic program with Dr. Vigna Sworn as the surgeon, and that uh, is an option for COPD and other disorders. There's a whole host of other disorders that we're a major center for: um, cystic fibrosis, pulmonary fibrosis, all of those uh, disorders. Um, we run large research and clinical programs for, um, and some of those disorders, as they progress, ultimately transplant as part of the management. Actually a lot of exciting things going on in pulmonary. Um, from a diagnostic side we've had a lot of advances in bronchoscopy so that's allowing us to do more uh, for the patients with less levels of invasiveness typically done as an outpatient. Um, it's a good area on the therapeutic side there's more and more um, drugs that are coming down the pipeline a lot of which of course are inhaled uh, so easy to take. Um, the basic science research that's been going on in all the various pulmonary disorders continues to advance, has been well funded, particularly here at the University of Chicago. Our section of pulmonary has done extremely well with NIH funding and have a lot of exciting projects going forward, both clinically and on the basic science side. So um, in a broad overstroke, it's uh, pretty exciting times in pulmonary and critical care. The 
critical care side here is is equally as active and well funded and is actually one of the leaders of the field. Um, most of the major advances in critical care thought uh, have come out of the University of Chicago in the recent years. So.